Now, President Bolame Chinubu has signed four executive orders deferring and suspending the commencement of certain taxes paid by individuals and companies in the country. The new policy ostensibly responds to concerns recently raised by our sister organization, the Z newspaper, which in a recent publication on Tinubu's first 30 days in office, highlighted multiple taxation as one of the challenges the president needed to address. Special advisor to the president on special duties, communications, and strategy, Dili Alaki, said the latest step by the president was aimed at reducing tax burden on Nigerians and their businesses. He added that the move was also meant to address concerns raised by manufacturers and other stakeholders regarding recent tax changes. Meanwhile, the president has approved the establishment of a presidential committee on fiscal policy and tax reforms. Taiwo Yedili has been appointed to chair the committee. Oyedili is a renowned expert in fiscal policy, taxation, and economic matters, who currently serves as a fiscal policy partner and Africa tax leader at PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC. Comprising experts from both the private and public sectors, the committee aims to achieve a minimum of 18% tax to GDP ratio within the next three years without stifling investment or economic growth. The most came barely 24 hours after the president signed four executive orders to ease the tax burden on businesses in the country. For an extensive discussion on this and the plans of his own organization with regard to Tinobunomics, as I will call it, I'm now being joined by an expert on economic issues and the publisher of Business Day, Frank Aibogun. Mr. Aibogun, welcome to This Day Live. It's good to have you on this show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, first, let's start with Tinobunomics. You are the publisher of Business Day. Every day, your newspaper talks about business, the economy, finance, and all that. So what do you think of uh, what has become known as Tinobunomics? We started from day one with the re removal of first subsidy, which people say is courageous, the harmonization of the, uh, of the forex, uh, uh, forex exchange uh, regime, the tax reforms that he has introduced, and now the uh, setting up of a committee on uh, tax reform to give ideas about fiscal policy, tax administration, addressing the uh, tax uh, revenue ratio to GDP. Your broad thoughts on all of this before we look at other issues. I think after eight years of um, a centrist government, a government that tended to pretend that government was capable of providing scholarship for everything we need, you needed a new direction, which President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is beginning to establish or to create. First, let's talk about removal of petrol subsidy and talk about the unification of the exchange rates. Those were two subsidies that had essentially brought the Nigerian economy to its knees. I mean, if you look at the data, the numbers are staggering. A country that cannot provide health for its people, a country that cannot build basic infrastructure for its people, a country that cannot ensure good education for its people, we have one of the largest, if not the highest, out of school children uh, 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 data in the world spending 400 billion naira on subsidizing petrol every month. That is a, dis a recipe for disaster. And I am not surprised that when the president announced that subsidy on petroleum was gone, and then prices were adjusted days after, there was not as much as a whipper of protest. protest. As they say, it was something whose time had come. You go to um, the subsidy on um, exchange rate, because that's what I call it. Um, look at what has happening, happened, which is quite interesting. The official rate has um, gone past and sometimes merging with 
what we call the black market rate at 700 and something. Um, but if you look at the initial fear was that if you adjusted the official rate, the black market rate will fly away through the window. But essentially, it is only just creeping. And I asked people, I was with a very senior uh, manufacturing CEO on Friday. And I was asking about sale and about, you know, inventory size and all that. And he said to me, Frank, we have all been pricing at 700 plus for years. So our prices are going nowhere because nothing has changed in terms of how we get foreign exchange. Now, I know the talk about inflation and all of that, but that's not surprising. The truth is, the biggest part, the core of inflation in Nigeria has essentially come about by the printing of money by the central bank of Ways Nigeria. Ways and means, they call Ways it. Ways and means, they call it. Now, <laughs> then you look, you, you, you look at uh, uh, other things that the president has done. Um, the uh, uh, um, relief by way of tax for some months, um, I'm not surprised about that because this is a transition. One government has come and gone, and many of the things that you see today being announced were actually on fire during the last administration. So they are being announced today, and the president is suddenly seeing some of them and saying, no, let's take a pause here. Oh, the law says you must give this number of months before a policy like this can come into force. And so, you know, just writing what may have been the wrong at the beginning. Then you look at the um, uh, um, Taiwo uh, Oyedele's uh, committee. Mm -hmm. One grand norm of taxation is that it has to be fair. Mm -hmm. So when you look at taxation in Nigeria, the people who bear the burden carry essentially all of the burden. When a new new taxation comes, it goes to them because they are the ones that they know their addresses, they know their bank accounts, they know uh, the business that they do. The bulk of Nigerians don't pay tax. Go and look at the tax register of, uh, of, of, of tax authorities in Nigeria, and you will be shocked how much of us are not in that. So what is um, tinubonomics, as some are calling it already? It is essentially freeing the economy from the hold of government and giving it back to the, the private, private sector that constitutes, by some account, 87% of GDP in Nigeria. Okay, Mr. Ibogun. Okay, fine. I, I see you are very pleased with the uh, Taiwo Yedele Committee on Tax Reforms. But do you see any likely conflict between that committee and the policy economic advisory uh, group that President Chinumbu also has? Because now he has a set of advisors on the economy. Now he has the Yedele Committee on uh, on uh, ta tax taxation, uh, taxation. Tax yeah. yeah, are they likely to work at cross purposes? I, I, Even when we all agree that you have to address the fiscal side, yeah. you have to address also uh, the monetary side. I, 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 I don't see areas of significant conflict here. Um, again, this is a new government. When a government comes into place, one of the things that it does most of the time, is to try and understand what is going on. And by bringing in a person like Tao, I mean, you couldn't get a better person to chair a committee like that. I have listened to Tao uh, uh, many times, and, 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 and Tao, when he talks about tax, uh, people will be surprised when Tao finishes and delivers his report. Um, Tao is not essentially going to say, race, you, in fact, I say you'll be surprised because there'll be instances where he will say, a, B, C kind of taxes should come down. Let us instead establish efficient administration. Bring more people into the basket rather than raise the button for those who are already paying tax. Well, uh, Zakios Adedeji said that much. Uh, Zakios Adedeji, as you know, is the special advisor on revenue. Yes. And he says, look, we just want to have better administration. Precisely. But, I mean, this is what you do on a daily basis as publisher of Business Day. Yes. This is what you have done yes. your entire career as a, a journalist. But Business Day, your newspaper, is planning a program called the CEO Forum. Yes. 
Now, this CEO forum has been there now. You've been doing it for more than a decade. Yes. But this year, you are focusing on growing businesses. Yes. And some people have talked about SMEs. Yeah. Even the uh, Chinubu government has said, oh, we are looking out for SMEs. Yes. Now, what are the specific deliverables from this uh, CEO forum for this year that is talking about growth, sustainability, uh, with... Uh, Akumi Adeshina yes. of the AFDB speaking, uh -huh. and other key persons uh, delivering uh, messages yes. and discussing. Yes. What should we expect? Now, we have two special guests of honor, and both of them are governors. Uh, governor Namadi of uh, Jigawa State, and of course, Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State. Both governors would be sharing with guests at the forum what they intend to do to, if you like, depopulate Lagos. How do we get cities outside of Lagos attracting population the way Lagos is attracting? How do you create industrial and economic hubs out of Lagos, building good work-life balance for people? Additional will be speaking on a very interesting topic. Um, the day the lion roared, making Nigeria a global giant in industry and commerce. And then, of course, we would have um, Raf Mupita, who is the global uh, um, president of MTN Group. He will be speaking on navigating technological disruption. All of us, that is what we are all dealing with today. And then, of course, we have uh, Osage Okumbo, who is the managing director of SPDC, that's Shell Petroleum Development Company, and is the chairman of Shell Companies in Nigeria. We are interested in finding out from a knowledgeable person like Mr. Kumbo, tell us, in an era where there is so much concern about fossil fuel, what can Nigeria still do with its oil and gas resources? We have significant oil and gas resources. Take, for example, the proven gas reserve of Nigeria is as much as two-thirds of that of Russia. Russia earns about a billion dollars selling gas to Europe every day. One billion dollars every day. We should be doing 60% of that, Dr. Abati. 60% of that is $600,000 a day. If $600 million a day. If we are selling $600 million a day from gas, Nigeria will not be where it is today. So there is a lot we want to know. I and businesses still believe that Nigeria's future still depends on how well we utilize our gas resources. We need revenues from gas to fund our fiscal requirement. We need ex uh, FX from gas to supply the foreign exchange market. So oil and gas still very crucial in all of this. Now, we then have panels. One panel starting in the morning would deal with the impact of government policy and regulation on businesses. Big, small, and medium businesses. How do you ensure smart regulation? Regulation that helps us build bigger cake rather than regulation that just struggles around how to share the cake. We also then have a panel on navigating technology disruption. We want our people to be early adopters of technology so we can benefit and thrive in the fourth industrial revolution. We also then have a panel on mobilizing capital for growth. The biggest challenge that Nigeria has today, which is an irony, is the challenge of getting enough capital to fund development and growth. I say it's an irony because there are trillions of dollars packed aside around the world looking for good place to be invested. Unfortunately, over the years, Nigeria has been seen as a place not serious not even desiring, not to talk of deserving, of attracting capital which we badly need in Nigeria. Well, Mr. Igogo, I, I understand all you've been saying. But the theme of this conference, one key phrase there is the place of leadership yes. in sustainable growth of business. Yes. Now, we, I've had uh, some you know, persons either on this program or on the morning show or elsewhere you know, saying, look, we didn't have the right leadership for eight years. Yes. 
Do you think that uh, President uh, Tinumbu can provide that leadership? And what are the priorities you will ask him to focus upon? Because sustainability of growth business, uh, of the growth of businesses is important. One of the things he said with the executive orders uh, is that, oh, the whole idea is to provide an enabling yes, environment. Yes. So what should be the priorities without preempting what will be the outcome yes. of the CEO forum? Yes. You see, after he announced that subsidy is gone, and business reckons that um, the next Federal Accounts Allocation Committee would have a pool of funds that is essentially doubling with the work that uh, Professor Soludo's committee is doing on behalf of the National Economic Council. So you are moving from about 760 billion naira to about 1.4 billion in one month in terms of the size of the pool of funds available for the 30 tiers of government. The key thing then here is discipline. How do you spend this money to mm. make impact? How do you spend this money to create inclusiveness in the economy? That's one. So it is not enough to put the money in the pool there. I know that that's the constitution. But as president, there is a need to provide leadership. What should we all do to ensure that this money and the impact of it gets to our people across the country? Secondly, we are in the process of a convergence of exchange rates. Now, the biggest challenge today is that of supply. It always has been the challenge that in the past we focused on things around demand or managing demand or demand management, as they say. For the first time, we are addressing supply, taking away the bottlenecks, you know, on the way of supply. But I know that it's not enough to just say that you have unified the exchange rate. There are a number, in fact, a plethora of policies that need to complement that exchange rate uh, 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 con rate convergence that must be done. Um, better economic management, as I said earlier. How you ensure that this whole jump, if you, almost a jumbo leap in what is available at the Federal uh, Revenue uh, Allocation Committee does not become a source of fueling the inflation that is already at a disturbing level. It has to be well spent and the transition ha mechanism has to be right to ensure that the impact, the positive is impact is huge and that we limit the negative impact. There is, of course, the, the point about uh, uh, how do you promote, you know, uh, a senior, in fact, a global CEO of one of the um, um, uh, num uh, two leading consulting firms in the world said in Lagos, that if he were president of Nigeria, there is something he will do every week. He will ask his people, give me a list of the global companies that are not in Nigeria. And every day, I will call one CEO who is not in Nigeria and say to him, Mr. ABC, why are you not in Nigeria? What can we do to ensure you come to Nigeria? Yes, I have many questions in my head. It's good you talked about this convergence of the uh, foreign exchange regime in Nigeria. Um, what do you think, for example, of the CBN coming out with another uh, policy directive that the um, uh, multinationals, the um, IOCs, the IOCs can, say, can sell dollar uh, directly uh, to, to whoever wants to buy. To, to whoever the, to wants bank, to yes. buy. You know, would that address the problem of supply? But my main question will be as follows. We hear about the CEO forum. The same one that you organize, uh, sometimes it's economic uh, summit group. Yes. They just had one in uh, Abidjan. Yes. Cote d'Ivoire. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, CEO forum. Yes. All these CEOs uh, coming together. How about outcomes? How about follow ups? Because uh, some of these uh, forums, uh, you know, just talking shop. Everybody talks, they go home, they do photo op. You know, Akim additional will deliver his paper. Uh, Shell MD will deliver his paper. Business Day will put their pictures everywhere. Is that where? Is that where it ends? It doesn't always end there, Dr. Abati. Um, gatherings like our CEO forum seeks to promote three things: knowledge sharing, top-level networking. 
top level networking. There are people who have attended these fora and have in such engagement tied up investment in Nigeria. Those that are in Nigeria have found suppliers, have found logistic partners. Those who are not in business have found equity partners who are willing to fund their business or fund their ideas. So this is not just about talking. And you know the mistake we often make is to imagine or to equate those CEOs who come to speak with policy makers. CEOs don't make policy. They shape policy. When the president said subsidy is gone at inauguration, he was speaking from a hymn book. Where did you think that hymn book came from? It is the clamor, advocacy of CEOs over the years. It's providing inspiration for leaders and for policy of today or policy of tomorrow. So networking, knowledge sharing, top level uh, 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 um, leadership development. Because we are bringing together those who have already made it. There are also those who are aspiring to be leaders. Just to sit at the feet of the senior CEOs and learn how they excel and how they build big global businesses. Okay, this CEO forum will start July 13th. On Thursday, July the 3rd. July 13th? July 13th, yes. July 13th, July the birthday of uh, Professor Wale Shoenka, yes. who was born in July 13, 1934. Precisely, sir. If I remember my literature very well. Yes. But how do we participate in it? Is this an open door event at a hotel and suites in uh, Lagos here? Yeah? Or you have to register, you have to... You have to register. We opened registration two months ago, and people have been registering. There are also invitations that have gone out to certain people to come. Uh, but we are also still accepting uh, a, a, a registration for those who have not registered uh, as at today. We need to know how many seats to provide. Uh, Eco Hotel is not a limitless no, uh, place in terms of size. Like a hotel. It, that's the hall that they we have. a big hall. It's the hall we are using. Even yes. that big hall has like a limit. Like a stadium. The, yes, <laughs> but it has a limit as well. Um, uh, okay. so, so we are taking as much. We expect about 300 uh, CEOs uh, from across Nigeria and uh, from uh, West Africa as well uh, to be joining us on Thursday, July the 13th. Well, you have said CEOs shape policy. Yes. Who are the key government officials who are going to be there? We, because th those are the ones to take the big takeaway. Yes. Yes. Uh, as I said, we expect two governors to be there. Okay. These two governors are members of the national from Zamfara. From, from Jigawa, from Jigawa okay. and from Edo State. Okay. Um, um, but well, also, we expect the president only has advisors as, as at today. We expect at least one or two of the advisors in the room. But we also expect heads of MDAs. Uh, head, I mean, heads of parastatals in the room as well. We expect regulators in the room as well. For us, the key people we want to address today are regulators. Okay. How do you ensure that regulation is taking away bottleneck for businesses to thrive rather than fitting bottlenecks on the way of businesses? Okay, finally, Mr. Ibogo. The World Bank, the IMF, other observers, they even endorse the trajectory of Chinobunomics. Yes. I go back to that. Yes. And they say, the World Bank, I'm quoting the lead economist of the World Bank, says, yes, there will be rise in inflation in the, uh, in the uh, near, term. In, near term, you know, but by the time you get to medium term, there will be deflation. Yes. Uh, can we be so optimistic? Because everything has gone up. And in Nigeria, the reality that we are seeing over the years is that when things go up, they don't come down. Even this uh, executive orders, okay, we've been told telecom will come down, this one will come down. Nigeria is one country where nothing comes down. Once the, it goes up. The truth of the matter is, when you impose tax and you take out that tax, that impact will be felt immediately. I have absol absolutely no doubt. Regarding telecoms, you're going to see it. Regarding excise duty, you're going to see it. It, it would happen. It is true that when this happens, um, especially when you make changes 
the way we are being forced to make changes in Nigeria. If we had been adjusting petrol price the way other countries do, in South Africa, for instance, petrol price is adjusted every month. Only four days ago, South Africa announced the price for petrol for the next one month. When you do that, the changes are usually in the frontiers. But when you allow us to get to the where we are now, you, 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 you expect huge bumps. But I have absolutely no doubt that we are doing the right thing. We are now following economic orthodoxy that has been proven over centuries. That is, if you effect supply, sorry, if you change demand, then price will change. There's nothing you can, it's Mr. the way it is. They are questioning that orthodoxy in Turkey, in Japan. No, 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 no. The truth of the matter <laughs> And is, they seem to be surviving. No, no, no. no. I, I agree. But you, you, must, you must accept one thing, that the changes that we are seeing today are not just single path changes. As I said earlier, you must complement them with a plethora of other things that people may not even talk about. For instance, when you talk about unifying exchange rate. You must do as the CPN has done now to say willing buyer, willing seller, even for those who are the big FX people, the IOCs. And there must be palliatives for poor people. My, my, my thinking about palliatives is, is, is that government needs to focus on long-term impactful things. Not like when you take chloroquine, the doctor gives you Panadol. After one hour, that Panadol goes off. It will be better for you not to fall sick with malaria again the next time. That's my view about the kind of palliatives that I seek. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Frank Aibugun, our publisher and chairman of uh, Business Day Newspaper Nigeria. And I wish you the very best with the CEO forum that takes off July 13 at the Eco Hotel and Suites here in Lagos, looking at the place of leadership in growth and development of business.